This week marks one year since the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. The legislation reduced tax rates for individuals and increased the standard deduction. It also cut the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 21 percent. Since the tax cuts took effect this year, they have been credited with boosting the economy. But they've also been criticized for not helping working families. As part of our series, Issues That Matter, we're taking a closer look at the impact of those tax cuts and the state of the economy one year later. Gary Cohn served as director of the National Economic Council and as chief economic advisor to President Trump during the tax debate. He resigned from his White House post in March, and he joins us for an interview you'll see only on CBS this morning. Good morning. Great to have you at the table. Thanks for having me. It's great let's, to be here. Let's start with the economy. The S&P is at a 14-month low. We continue to see these wild market sell-offs. Former Fed Chairman Janet Yellen said she's really concerned about another financial crisis because of uh, too much deregulation and corporate bar Borrowing. Is she wrong? Let's start with the U.S. economy, because that's really what's core to everything. The U.S. economy is really strong right now. We're going to have 3.3% GDP growth in the United States this year. We have jobs or unemployment at all-time, well, not all-time, 50-year low right now. We've got a 3.7% unemployment rate in the United States. We have wages growing at 3.1%. But the more interesting part about the wage growth is that we've got the bottom end of workers, the lower paid workers, growing at a faster rate than the higher paid workers. And we think that's directly attributable to the tax bill. If you look at what's going on with corporate spending, we're starting to see corporate spending come back into the system, which is exactly what we had projected when we passed the tax bill. We gave companies a five-year uh, window to expense all of their cap capital expenditures. We've seen in recent weeks, we've seen companies like Apple and Amazon announce mega billion dollar plants where they're gonna really go out and build new plants, hire new people. That is gonna start hitting the economy in the beginning of next year, and we think we're gonna see a lot more of that in the next couple of years. We, so we think the fundamental economy in the United States is very strong. We've yet to see corporate, impact, uh, corporate spending really make an impact as far as the GDP overall. Uh, we anticipated a sugar rush immediately following the tax cut. You were really selling this as a, a way and a mechanism for companies to reinvest in the economy. I want to play back a clip of you last year talking to a group of CEOs about this. Can I ask you all a quick question? If the tax reform bill goes through, do you plan to increase investment, uh, uh, your company's investment, capital investment, just a show of hands, the tax reform goes through? Okay. Why, why, why aren't the other hands up? <laughs> why aren't the other hands up? Well, so the CEOs were really prescient. While we did see some reinvestment, most of it was seen in stock buyback and dividends. So are you not disappointed in the results? No, if you actually look at the numbers, we're seeing exactly what we would have thought we would have seen in, in capital expenditures. Small and medium-sized businesses are spending. Because if you think of a small or medium-sized business today, the the regulatory process that they need to go through to spend is not that difficult. If you're a sole proprietor that owns a pizza restaurant or owns a nail salon or owns a dry cleaner and you want to expand to a second store, you really just have to go out and lease the store and buy the equipment and hire a few people. If you're going out to build a huge manufacturing facility in the United States that's going to hire 15, 20, 30,000 people, you need to go out and do a massive plan for that. You need to go out and acquire the land, you need to get the permits, you need to hire the architects, you need to go through that entire process that takes well over a year. When we did our tax plan, which was based on a 10-year cycle, we assumed that we would get no major capex in the first year. On stock repurchases, it makes enormous lot of sense for companies to, to repurchase their stock now, especially as you said, stocks are low. You look at the dividend yields and yield yields on some of these stocks, the, the boards of these companies are making good fiduciary decisions for their shareholders. And think about this, when you buy back a stock, what happens? Someone sells you the stock. That person then pays tax on that gain, and that person reallocates the capital to another business that needs the, the capital. So the stock market is acting just as it should in reallocating capital to those businesses that need capital. But the promise that was made for the tax cut is that the wages would go up faster first and that it wouldn't go into stock buybacks and plants and all that. There would be more going into wages. That hasn't so much happened. Some wages are up, but there's been e eaten away by a little inflation. But let me ask you about the, the future. Uh, look, we have uh, look I, I don't think that's right. I think when you see 3.1% 
wage growth against 2% inflation, we've got 1.1% real wage growth. For the prior 10 years, before the tax reform was done, we had zero wage growth. So we've had real wage growth in the United States for the last year. You cannot deny that. But you've and also that- had tariffs. You also have tariffs, which are a tax, as you agree, right? I agree. They are, consu- are they are consumption tax. So you have a tax on these kind of workers, a lot of them buying Chinese goods that are now more expensive. There are farmers who are having to get bailed out now for the second time by the U.S. government. So you have a policy here where you have tariffs, then you have a bailout to fix the problems happening with the tariffs. So my question is, in the future, if that's the situation with that, we also have deficit and debt numbers yes. that have gone up considerably. Revenue is up after this tax cut, but it's not up at the rate that it would be under previous policy. So those are big long-term problems for the economy. Look, I'm not going to sit here and deny that we've got a debt problem. I think we've got a huge debt problem, and I'll be the first to tell you that. But our debt problem is not a revenue problem. As you just said, our revenue is up this year, even with the new tax tax legislation. We have a spending problem in this country. But the revenue would have been higher under previous policy. It may may have been higher. You don't know that. You don't know that. The interesting thing is you say the revenue would have been higher. We don't know if the the 500-plus companies that went out and gave bonuses to their workers the weeks after the tax plan was enacted, we don't know if those bonuses would have been given. We don't know if some of those pensions would have been funded. We don't know if some of the companies that raised wages right after the tax plan, if they would have been raised or not. So you we say it would have been higher. We don't know that. What we do know is the economy right now, because of the tax plan, is very strong, and we continue to grow. We also do know, and I agree completely, we have a huge debt and deficit problem in the United States, and we have to figure that out. And we just can't keep spending and and deficit finance this country. The president has said he will shut down the government if he doesn't get the funding for his border wall. Do you, how, how much do you think that will hurt the economy, and how much will it hurt investors' confidence? Is that a good move, in your opinion, first? If you'll no, that first. We, yes. we never want to see the government shut down. Mm-hmm. Shutting a government down, shutting a business down is never a good move. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hopeful that the Congress can get together in the next couple of days here and deliver something to the president that makes sense that he's willing to sign. Do you have any regrets about your time in the Trump White House? Absolutely not. It's the most amazing experience of my life. Anyone who gets the opportunity to serve this country, they should take that opportunity. It was a spectacular experience. Are you offended by the term globalist, which is what the president called you? I'm abso- call it anti-Semitic. I'm absolutely not offended by the term globalist, because I am a globalist. Mm-hmm. I believe we live in a globalized world. I think the United States is a very integral part of a globalized world, and we have to figure out how to live as a good citizen of the globalized world. So do the Chinese, so do the Russians, so do the Middle Eastern countries. But we are globalized. We cannot change that back. So how many times, Gary, since you've left, have you said, boy, I wish I was back there at the White House? <laughs> <laughs> since it was there, such an there, amazing there, experience for you. I, I know, you'll, how many fi- times have I you know said? you'll find this shocking to believe, but I'm really enjoying my time out of the White House. <laughs> my family in the beginning was actually even enjoying having me around. I yes. think they're getting sick of that, but yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very pleased with what I'm doing right now. It's good to see you, Gary. Great to see you. You'll be, too. continue to be part of the conversation. Thank yes. you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you.